Hey everybody, hope you're all well. Uh, random fix today. It's going to be a LG TV 42 inch 42 LN 5400. This is a mate's TV, he's just dropped it round and I said I'll have a look at it. It's got black screen, no picture at all. I suspect it is the backlight. So I'm pretty sure it's backlight, but let's, first of all, he's giving me the uh, remote here, he's giving me the stand, he's giving me the thing, he's giving me the TV. Quick trick to tell how the remote's working, I found this off gadgets videos, but a camera will pick up the infrared LED there, you can see that, beep, 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 beep. you can't see that, but the camera can, so I know the remote's working. Okay, so am I so convinced it's the backlight? Well, I've turned the lights out, and I've turned the TV on, I've turned it onto a station with a remote, and then I've pressed menu. So if I just hold a torch up, and I've hit the menu button, you can see that there is actually an image there, behind the... Uh, behind the backlight. So we know that whatever's working the picture is actually working the LCD. What's what's not working is the backlight. Okay, so the screws I had to take out, the ones you'll have to watch out for, all the ones around the edge. Diddly 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 do, diddly diddly do, diddly do. Long ones. Two short ones here, one in the middle here, two here, uh, one here, one here, and I think that's it. Oh, yeah, I did these two here. Once you've done that, the top should lift off. So once you take the back cover off, you can see what you paid for. And it's not very much inside. <laughs> you've got a power supply unit, the main logic board, a couple of speakers, uh, the board that takes the information from the main logic board and makes it a picture on the screen with the LCD. And then you've got the infrared sensor there. It's a switch mode power supply. It's got uh, main input here fuse, a metal oxide varistor dumps excess gross over voltage to ground, NTC thermistor to take the whack out of it when you first turn it on, you've got some more filter in here, a couple of uh, XY caps and an inductor, you've got a common mode choke which basically reduces noise between the line and the neutral, you've got a uh, bridge rectifier which takes your AC and turns it into pulse DC and that steps it up by about 1.41 times. So if it's 230 volts coming in, it's going to be about 330, 340 volts pulse DC by the time it's gone through this. And that's why you don't want to touch anything on the high side, on the uh, main side. The dotted line there, you can see that's the isolation line. Anything this side is going to be nasty, especially after here, on here. Once it's sitting in these uh, caps at about 300 and odd volts, it's then chopped up by this transistor here, it's got a huge heat sink on it, it needs a bit of a clean out. And what that's doing is it, it's taking this and letting it through this transformer, which steps it down at a certain rate, at a certain pulse width modulation. Once it, once it gets through there, you've got at least two secondary power rails here. These are diodes, because they're smoothing the, or rectifying the output from that transformer. Two there, and two there. Uh, and you can see that one of those is going to the backlight, because it's disappearing through that bit of tape. And the other one is going all the way over to the main logic board. There's a couple of other transformers here. There's going to be a 5 volt standby rail because when you turn the TV on and you haven't put on on the remote, it needs some kind of power to know that when you press it on the remote to come on. It's probably that one there, to be honest. Uh, that's the opto-isolator. And what that's doing is it's, it's monitoring the output and depending on what it sees it's transmitting via light through that little chip back to this side and varying the frequency at which this transistor is chopping this voltage through this transformer and by doing that it's regulating the output it's it's maintaining the output at the desired level it's going to test the voltage on the LED drive, you can see out there it's saying 100, 120, 100, 100. It settles down, it's all over the place. I'm trying to do the same thing with that connector disconnected. It's not showing me zero volts. If it was showing me zero volts, it would mean there was a problem with the board, it wasn't supplying any voltage. The fact it's showing me all, sort of between 100 and 120 volts suggests to me that the problem is with the LED strip. I've disconnected the uh, the LED cable, and now I'm going to do the same thing again with my dodgy probes. 
Let's see, I've got a hundred and twenty. I've actually got the same behaviour. It's just a quick one. I just want to see if there's anything left on these nasty caps. I'll put it on 600 volts because there could be 400 volts here. Don't touch them. So I'm going to probe them. 17 volts. 17 volts. And 17 volts. So there must be bleeder resistors. I'm going to disconnect this board just because I want to see why it's got LED minus here on the furthermost black pin, LED plus here on the furthermost white pin. These two middle ones aren't labelled. And if I put this on continuity mode, you can see that they're not actually beeping. Okay, so I've ripped the board out and given it a bit of a clean. Now the fact I was getting uh, 120 volts, whether or not this was connected, suggests to me there's a break in the circuit that feeds this. But what was confusing me is there's four wires to this. Or oh, it looked like there was four wires. There's four pins on this connector, and there was four wires coming out of it. But upon closer inspection, they appear to just use that connector, and I don't know why. And the middle two pins, which are these two here, don't actually go anywhere. They go to th these three are just like used as anchor points. So you've got positive, negative, that's it. So the LEDs are in fact in series. And what that means is one goes, they all go. It's like Christmas tree lights from the 1980s. If one light was out, the whole lot wouldn't work because there's a break in the circuit. So I'm pretty convinced now that this is to do with an LED or an LED strip, one or more lights being blown on that strip. Okay, so the LEDs have arrived. It's time to finally bite the bullet. I am quite scared because I'm pretty sure I'm going to crack the LCD because it's like 42 inches across and probably a mil thick. I'm going to try and balance it on the back of that TV. So first thing I'm going to do, disconnect this cover here, these two screws, take that off, then disconnect the ribbon cables that go to the LCD um, distributor boards underneath and disconnect the um, IR sensor. Incidentally, I'm getting all of this off Shop Jimmy's channel, which I'll link in the description. Okay, so that's the cover off. Just got to lift up these two little tabs here and here and that ribbon and that ribbon out, and then this cable to the IR sensor come out. Okay, so they're off, disconnected. The thing I've got to do is take off the bezel. The bezel's clipped on with these plastic clips, like this. The bezel come off, that's quite an easy thing. It just unclips. Next thing I've got to take these screws all the way out and take the frame all the way off. So you've got one, uh, two, three, all around the side, take those off, take the frame off basically, and then we'll take the panel out. This fold up some boards here and take the panel out. So you can see this, the frame's off now, so it's a delicate part now. This is the part I'm scared about, because this is the part where the screen probably gets cracked. What I'm going to do is fold these driver boards up onto the top of the screen and tape them on. And then get something thin, like a bit of plastic. Stack a few of those up and try and get under the board, lift it up and put it on there. You can see I've taped them up. Masking tape's probably not strong enough. The, the ribbons are pre fairly flexible. I'll get my words out eventually. And to get them out, you have to kind of lift them up this way and then out because they're behind these little tabs. Now comes the really scary bit, trying to get the panel out. Ooh, that was scary. I didn't video it. I've got a bit sidetracked in, in the zone there. But basically, I've got a bit of card and some transparencies each side. Slip the bit of card under first, under the corner, one side, the other side, and then added more and more until it was thick enough to pick up the screen with. Moved it to the middle and then picked the screen up. The screen weighs nothing, but it's so thin, it's unreal. Hopefully we're good. It's got to take out the frame around the filter, this diffuser. And again, it's just these plastic clips all the way around. So that's the frame off. Now I'm going to take all of the diffusers off, but I'm going to take them together in this order. If you don't put them back in the right order, you can get a blurry screen and it'll be a nightmare. This quite a few and the odds of them getting them right is pretty small so i'm just going to flip it over pull these through and then we'll take the reflector out and then we'll have a look at the leds see whether there's more than one out and maybe a trick i'll show you if there's only one out how you can get around it without buying a whole new set so these are what we're pinching out the power supplies and i think there's one under the power supply so that'll have to come off temporarily to get to it okay so just a quick note where they went one there one there one there and one under the power supply there finally here we are and you can see why these are not a great design there's four wires there but only two of them actually go anywhere 
So that means that all of these LEDs, whoop, got caught in a cage there. All of these LEDs are in series, which means that if one goes, they all go, which is just such a stupid, but obviously cheaper design. So there might be a way to cheat here. I'm gonna change them all because I've done all this work. I might as well change them all. I don't wanna change them one and then another one go. But there is another way to, to check these. Each of these is about three volts. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, or one. And it's gonna be about 30. So if I put 30 volts from my power supply on each of these strips, then I'll see which ones light up, which ones don't. If any of them don't light up, then I can try and work out which LEDs don't work or which parts of the strip don't work. Like I say, I'm gonna chop them all out anyway, but just to see whether it's just one or what's gone wrong here. Let's try on the bottom one here. So minus plus, that row up here is dead. That row's fine. That row's fine. That row's fine. And that row's fine. So what you can then say is, well, is the, all of this row dead? Highly unlikely. So if you didn't want to go and change all of them, you could just narrow it down like that, just with your power supply going across each, each, each half of it here, each half of it. So I know the faults on this, and I guarantee it's one bulb. You have to take the diffuser off, like that, and then what we can do is short each one and see if the problem goes away. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you why this is another classic example of for the want of a nail, you know, for, for a, probably a two cent component, a two three hundred pound appliance gets thrown out. You see I've knocked the diffusers off the top of these, because what I'm doing, I'm just going across the top, because we know that the circuit's broken, one of the LEDs has failed open circuit. So if I short them, we can tell which one. So the whole reason this whole thing blew is one LED. Now what your options are here, if you wanted to bodge it and run, you could just short that with solder and it wouldn't miss it. Like There's so many lights on there, it's not going to miss one LED with the diffusers and everything. But because this is a mate's TV, I'm going to change all of the LEDs. Just taking out the uh, old LEDs with a scraper. It's got adhesive on the back. And what I want to do is make sure the noob strips fit the older thing there. As I'm doing it, sliding that into there like that. These have got a adhesive backing on it, and the old ones leave it on there. It's quite tough to get off. It's really tough stuff. Uh, but it's just a question of taking the backing off, sliding them in, joining them together, and they're guided at each end by these little knob nobules. So you can't get it wrong. They all are in place, 2020 marked up, new LEDs, all of them. A little tip, if you want to keep it going a bit longer, turn the backlight down. A lot of people run the backlight really, really high and that's why they burn out. It's just a question now of one final test, which I'll do off camera and then putting it all back into reverse order. Much point in me covering the reassembly, but there it is, all reassembled. Main thing is to know that the power supply is plugged in properly and these ribbon cables are plugged in properly. They're a bit fiddly, but they will go. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that one. It's just a quick video of a repair to a LED TV for a mate. Um, just shows you that one little five cent component can throw out, you know, a 200 pound TV. Uh, I've showed you a way you can bodge it if you want to do that. But uh, as it belongs to a mate, I've decided to change all the LEDs. So it should go for another four years. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hope you're all well and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye.